I never planned on qualifying for Ipswich, especially through the Entertainers League, because it's just, it's in a normal year, it's nigh on impossible. There's that many people that have really got a good chance of doing it, and there's that many different meetings. I mean, I don't really do the 1500s or the micros, and there's, there's a good seven or eight meetings that you miss out on there. So, never really sort of had any intention, but after the lockdown, we just started racing up everything that we had sat there waiting, and then sort of went, we've got a good chance here, we've got to make it to World of Show and let's go for it. There was probably four different meetings, four different kind of things, so, yep, we'll do them get on it and let's push for it. We'll get a chance this time. So I got my mask on, I'm safe. Busy, yeah, it's busy, busy year. We obviously we missed half of it through the lockdown situation, but we started off with. Well, I think we ended up doing four meetings, both the icebreakers, civil war, and the uh, Monday meeting at Lynn, and then they cancelled it. But it done us a favour. Got everything. Got built another set of Jag gear. Got all the cars ready, ready for when we come back afterwards. Really, so we was halfway prepared, but then we weren't expecting for it to be as busy as it was. Uh, standout of the year, probably bank holiday. That was very busy, I think I ended up doing 12 out of the 14 races. Had a van, Mondo and um, Reliant and Robin, I think that was like four or five races, which was killer on its own. And then we got three out of the van and done every one apart from the split heats that we couldn't do in the Mondo. So that was pretty good. I slept well that night, I did not need rocking sleep. That was, that was, well, went out, got something to eat, went home, and then just no night, good night. Um, Civil War's always a favourite of mine, I didn't really have a good one this year, but I just love the idea of the meeting, it's just red cars, white cars, let's have a tear up, it don't matter who it, who you are, who, who you race for, normally just go out there and just smash anyone up on the opposite team and just try and get on with it and just try and have a good day. And it always is a good day to be fair, but it's just cold, bloody cold. Well, qualifying for Ipswich, it's, it's, all, it's what everyone should really be going for if they're into racing. I mean, it's, it's the biggest race of the year. It's the biggest race of whatever you should be. Everyone should be pushing to go for it and to actually get that text off Butler and say, congratulations, you've done it. Was, yeah, it was really good. Um, like I said, the only killer was it, it was there and then it got delayed and then it got delayed again. But I saw that, that sort of killed the spirit of it and obviously not having the full crowd there was completely different as well. It just felt like a normal day or practice session really. So we just, it just, you know, it just didn't have that usual buzz to it and we're normally always excited whether we're racing or not for it. But it's one of them things, you know, everyone's in the same boat this year and I mean, the, the good thing about it, I think, was there was 19 first timers in the, in the actual race, which just shows that, you know, with half season, anyone's got sort of a real good chance of doing it. And it's, it's hard to maintain a full year's worth of racing to be able to be in that top spot of any promotion, which is just testament to how much of a privilege it is to be in that race. The Ipswich day, we started out, we come in, um, finished a few bits on the car that we'd sort of leave. We always leave a few bits um, just for something to do. But gent steady cruise up there and just, uh, yeah, just, just sort of nice and relaxed, pulled in. It's like normally when we're pulling in, it's just, ran with people and everything like that and, and we just sort of it was a bit different but 
it was still nice to get to the end and turn right. Normally we're always straight off, get in the woods, try and <laughs> get, a, get a decent spot in the in the crap pits, as we say. But um, yeah, no, it was, it was it was still good and still surreal. Apart from the long walk we had to go and sign in. It's normally we're right near that, but. Uh, the racing side um, was a bit of a bit of a bummer for me, but like, well, pulling out onto the grid was was good because I managed to get Dad to drive it. He managed to squeeze in in the end without ripping all the wiring out, which was handy. Um, and then, like so coming through the tunnel, receiving like your sort of trophy and whatnot. Driving, driving round and just seeing all the crowd, you didn't really, you didn't really recognise many people because there weren't obviously a lot of people and um, obviously they're all covered up and you couldn't see their faces. But that's normally always good when you go round and you see people you know cheering and whatnot. But again, it is what it is. We then lined up, was nicely at the back, good position I thought. Um, just tried to get in as many laps as I could really and wait for a good opportunity to do something but no, nothing really arised. I uh, got spun out and it hit the kerb and where it hit the, uh, the bracket where the centre bearing bolts on it sheared the bolts out the floor. Uh, just a complete random, random thing. I've been smashed to death in these Jags over several years and uh, never had anything like that. It's always stayed in, just something silly like that, going up a kerb sideways sort of killed it. But it is what it is, that's racing, you can't think of everything. I mean, we'll try and change it a bit better for the next one so we don't have that problem again, but that was the end of the night, but can't be helped. On to the next one. As you can probably see, we've got, there's two Jags here, one on the ramp, one on the floor. Um, one's got the two free engine out of a Galaxy uh, in a V8 shell, so an X308, and the bottom one's got a straight six uh, engine that come in the Jags originally. Uh, and during the lockdown, we had a bit of a chance and thought, uh, managed to pick up a manual setup, which is quite rare. And uh, we managed to put, put one together during that bit of time that we had while we're not racing, which obviously helped a lot. Um, made everything for it. Uh, good cars, loads of power. Um, handle so much better because obviously you're taking out, a, that was a 4 litre V8, that's a massive engine, obviously it's all alley but there's still a lot of weight we're taking out from the front axle and it just, on tarmac they just struggle a bit um, with a bit of push because there's no weight on the front, so it's sort of a last minute decision, we've both sat there, with them both being delayed, we had have, have both sat there ready to go, took the manual one just for sheer power uh, and, and handling around the corner, it's, they do handle a lot better in it than the two free ones. Two free ones are brilliant on shale, but sort of do struggle with push a lot on tarmac. But so whether it was the right decision or not, I don't know, but it was it was going well. And obviously well not you can see much because Kingsley in the following day I let my little cousin take it and it absolutely got caked in murk and all so we'll spend a lot of time cleaning a lot of stuff out when we come around to using it again. But at least we've got a bit of time now so at the box, sort of Jags are a really good car. They don't need a lot to them. It's just a silly, silly few things. I think the one I took to Icebreaker, I picked it up on Tuesday. I was working away Wednesday, Thursday, and started it Friday. So, well, picked up, stripped it Tuesday night, and then we started it Friday, and it was we was done Saturday afternoon. So they only take a couple of days to do. Once you've got all the kit, and how I made all the kit, it just drops in the original bolts. I can run around with a 12mm drill bit and just bang, 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 you know, they're, they're all, all, everything lines up with something that's already there in the shell, so you don't even have to think about it, which is quite handy. So anyone that would know these engines, know they come all in, uh, on injection, but I'm not a big fan of that, I never have been, I probably never will be, so we converted it to a carburetor, made, made the inlet manifold uh, myself, well made everything myself really, apart from the carb. Um, so converted all that, dropped the 4.2 Jag Dizzy in, set to change the gear on the bottom and then off we go. I mean, it, 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 we had it rolling road and it didn't, no one know about a fully built uh, two three frog eye engine. So the power's there, which is good. Uh, it's just laying it down and trying to work out the gearing because they're a bit of a donkey engine. They're not really a, not really a rever, but they've just got power from your get go. Just put your foot down and off you go. Which is which is pretty good as well. So uh, start of the year, icebreaker. Um, I'd ask the I'd ask the lads on our WhatsApp group if anyone was interested in doing it, and no one was really keen. So um, 
Taylor messaged me and said, would you like to race for them? And it's always nice to guess for someone, know that, that they want you in their team. And so we chucked the car together, went racing, did a bit. Engine blew up in the second or third one. Had a good couple of shots in it, good couple of head-ons, and then, yeah, smashed the engine a bit, put a yank chassis rail through the through the cam cover, which is not really um, very healthy for an engine when it knocks the pulleys off and the chain off, but it was already knackered anyway, so see it off in good style. Obviously, I'd, I'd, I'd like to thank anyone that's helped me this year. I mean, there's been several people, um, especially Jack and like Ross, always coming uh, racing and helping me. We always get, no matter what happens, I always say we'll get that car back out. Whether it's completely knackered, it's going to take us all day to do it. We just want to get it back out. It doesn't matter how bent it is, we can fix it. If, it, if we can fix it. Um, obviously, Mark at Whizbitch Breakers, especially because he got me into the sport properly and give him a chance and now we're sort of sort of 10 12 years later we're sort of we're getting there <laughs> a bit slow start but we're getting there but here's what it is you go through different life cycles and you know different stages of your life that other things take precedent but i don't really i used to i used to think i tried too hard and everything had to be perfect but then when i started i didn't really care i didn't really put as much time into the cars I found out I was having better days because, you know, the more you put into it and you, you get more frustrated when it did go wrong. But when you come to the realisation that it does go wrong anyway, it can't be helped. If you, you can't out-engineer everything, you can't think of everything, you just got to go out there and enjoy it while you're doing it. And if you're not enjoying it, don't do it. And that, that really changed it a couple of years for me. I started where I didn't enjoy it because too, much, too, too long down here on my own just being miserable and you go and have a bad meeting and it really knock you but then when you start having them ones where you just go ah oh, couple of days we'll throw that together and have a go and have a blinder you think ah oh, well we'll just carry on doing that then it seems to work it seems to be the winning recipe it's like this year was absolutely manic we're just trying to get card and after card and after card and to try and hit that Lynn is very difficult with the amount of meetings it does I mean it's just there's so many different formulas and there's always two on which is really hard work. Just on a normal day, just having racing two different cars, because as a driver, you don't really know where you want. I think on bank holiday, I'd take my helmet off and I'd literally just walk out, put it back on again, and it was a hot day. Spend all day in your oval just constantly. The only time I had a breather was just when you're sitting waiting for the start of the race, which was sort of good. Um, obviously, Roy as well for supplying, the, supplying that Robin and fixing it. I, I broke or snapped the axle in half and sort of thought that's it ideal we can chill out for a couple of races there come back after the next race and it was on the side and it was changing the axle I was like oh no <laughs> I, could do, I could have done without that but it wouldn't have been the day it was without it and yeah it was, it was good just thought anyone that gives up their time their own personal time to either come down here even just like talk a bit of crap for a couple of hours and just sort of dream me on or oh, comes racing and always gets stuck in and help you know it, it, it all helps, every little helps. As you can see behind me, we've got uh, the cool wall, just random stuff I've kept off for uh, just different cars that I've sort of just, I just like the look of and kept them. We've got the bonnet of the Studebaker, uh, side of one of the vans that I've raced. Um, I mean, I'm lucky really, Joby comes down, he paints everything, he does all the sign right and he does an, does an amazing job as well. So, And he just comes down and just makes me laugh when I'm sort of fed up and ready to go home and he, he sort of always helped me out. I'm very fortunate in that sense and he, he does a 
really good job every time. I was going to say something else, but no, he does an amazing job every time, and you know, I thank him as well for that. Oh well, I um, signed over to Trackstar. Um, I was I always Melbourne registered because they run a lot of Monday meetings, and Trackstar never really did. And then um, with everything that happened and. Uh, track stars, I've, I've got an unlimited set up, so it's sort of coming on. You're never guaranteed a bad day at, at Kingsland unless it's like, properly raining, but even then the track's good, but uh, your track's always good. Um, it's always good. There's always something going on. There's always the people, there's always a mix of crashes and races, which is which is what you need, and it is always, you never, you're always guaranteed a good day. You're always made to feel welcome, and um, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do like racing at track style. Plans for 2021. Um, right. Uh, we'll do a bit. Of, do a bit of travelling next year. I think. Uh, tick off some tracks that I've never done before. So we've got a few, few bits and bobs to do like that. Um, got, a, got a couple of different cars that we're gonna try and get them out and yeah, we'll have a bit of, bit of fun with them. Was meant to do Holland this year, but that never worked. Obviously, it was, everything was shut down, so I'd like to get that one ticked off next year as long as everything's all sorted and the, the world's back working. Um, yeah, just carry on, really. I don't really set plans. Start. I find it for start setting plans, I, I just never do them anyway. So just come down here when, when we're not working, build a car, and then find somewhere to take it, I think. Yeah, carry on, do that. Obviously, we've got Lynn up the road, so as many of them as I can do, but I'm going to look at the, the big map when it comes out. I'd like to do Bradford, that would be a, that would be a pretty good one, we've got a Series 2, so I'll probably end up taking that there if I can get a book in, so that would be, that would be a good track, that looks, that looks really good. Um, yeah, it's just, just pretty much build stuff, smash it, strip it, build another one, you know, it's, it's the vicious cycle, don't make any plans, just go for it and see where it takes you. No, I never set fire to them. I'm a bit pretty boring like that. I never seen set fire to anything. 